Our young people gonna take charge today. And they gonna start up start us off. So we ask all our youth to come forward and lead us in devotion. Amen. All our youth and young adults come on and lead us in devotion, song, and prayer. Amen. Don't y'all come at once. <laughs> All our young people, come on down. You, you there, young? Oh, yeah, you, you on the door. Come to the front, right in the front. Amen. Right in the front. Come on, man. Yeah, come on. Come on, baby. Yeah, you too. And one of you just start us off with a song and someone pray, and then we'll continue from there. I, you, the young adults, going to lead us off today. Amen. 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 Hey. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. Psalm together. Psalm 23, a Psalm by David, the 23rd Psalm. Let us please stand as we go together. Psalm 23, verses 1 to 6. That is the entire psalm, and we shall read these verses together. Psalm 23, let us read together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us remain standing as we sing our morning hymn, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Hymn number 10 in your hymn, those hymn number 10, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Let us 
sing together. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing His word. It sounds like music in my ears. The sweetest thing on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus.
Father, I need to hear that this morning. Amen. That you don't, uh, a blessing is coming through. And when God sends the blessing, you may not have room to receive it. But go ahead and receive it anyway. <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with a little overflow. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Youth Choir, for blessing us on this morning. We thank God for the blessings that are coming through, but we also thank Him for the blessings we have right now. Uh, when we look around our lives and see what God has brought us, we can truly say the Lord has been good to us. Amen? Amen. And we can certainly give Him the honor, the glory, and the praise. Turn you around. Now he set you free. 
That is some good information you can go and tell. Amen? Yes. Amen. Everyone, many people listening out there for something to say, and I'm telling you, <laughs> we're living in a world without hope. Go and tell them that God is a good God. Last night, uh, uh, Janice and I went out to a restaurant in, in White Marsh in Maryland, the outskirts of, uh, of Baltimore, and there was a commotion uh, between this this fella and his, I don't know if it was his wife or his significant other or just his other, but whatever it is that occurred between those two individuals, I mean, we had to listen to some of the worst cuss words on this, and she was the one doing the cuss. And he sat there, I tried to get a word, he couldn't do it, wore him out and even the waiters who were there were, were just amazed and when they left they were exhausted so Jack, so I said to them I said do y'all want me to pray for y'all and, and you know Janet Janet said yeah y'all he's a pastor he can pray but as we were leaving the restaurant there was this one young lady sitting in the corner and she said pastor pray for me and I did. Now we're in a restaurant, and you know you, you don't have at least in some of these places you, you you don't have church in a restaurant. But when I saw her hand go up and heard the tune of her voice, I don't know what she's going through, but she said, "Just pray for me." My brothers and sisters, we ought to be glad that we have a God who hears our prayer, a God who blesses us, a God who carries us and takes care of us so much, he loves us so much that whenever, whatever we're going through, no matter what's happening in the restaurant or in the world, all we have to do is come to him and he will hear our prayer. Whatever you're going through today, don't get so mad about it that you have to say a few choice words and they're not French, they're English. Uh, look, excuse my French. I ain't French is speaking, that's, that's English. <laughs> you know, but but don't, don't get in so much of an uproar uh, that you lose your sanity. <laughs> uh, give it to God. Uh, God can handle whatever it is you're going through. That is sermon number one. Now let me preach sermon number two. Turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. And when you find that chapter, let's look at verses 9 to 12. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 9 to 12. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 9 to 12. If you have to say amen. Amen. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, Fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. I want to talk about when God is in your nest, when God is in your nest nest. The God I serve and the God you serve is what we call an omnipresent God, which means that God is everywhere at the same time. We're here worshiping him right now here on Gravel Hill. 
And at First Baptist or Second Baptist or Third Baptist, the same God is there and they're worshiping him as well. He is a God that is everywhere. And not only, my brothers and sisters, is God in our churches, but God is present in our lives. He is present in our circumstances. No, no matter what we go through, no, no matter how difficult it is, always know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is right there. I'm not telling you something I heard. I, I read his book. I read this book called the Bible. And in this Bible, time and time again, you see God present wherever his people live. I believe it was David who said, even if I were to descend to the pits of hell, God is there. So that the God we serve, I just want to let you know, in case you didn't know, and if you know, let me remind you, God is everywhere. And, and in this text today, one of the many instances in which we see God's presence is in the life of this man named Jacob. The text shows us that God took care of this man named Jacob, found him in the desert found him in the wilderness, but took care of him in such a way that Jacob was a blessed man. In fact, I think the verse says that for the, Lord, that for the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. And of course, that name Jacob later on went to, to me, uh, uh, Israel, because he changed that name to Israel. But here it is, my brothers and sisters, once again, we are reminded that God is everywhere. Well, another place where God is present is also in our comfort zones. It's what I would call the mess, because you see, when you go home and, and you get relaxed and you take off the jacket and, and take off the shoes and, and, and take off uh, the socks and everything else and you lay it back, you, you're in your mess because you are relaxed. You, you can rejuvenate yourself because you're in a place that you call your mess. That's where you live. That's where you eat. That's where you sleep. That's where you wake. You're there. Well, my brothers and sisters, it ought to be that even in what we may call our comfort zone or a mess that God is right there. What the writer of the book of Deuteronomy seeks to do is he, he seeks to show us how God took care of Jacob by giving us the illustration of an eagle. Many of us here know eagles. We've seen eagles. An eagle is a majestic animal, majestic bird. It is a magnificent Bird. It can fly high. It can see so far away because of the pupils in its eyes. It is an amazing animal. And if you really read the Bible, you will see that time and time again, the eagle is used to show God's power. The eagle is used to show God's purpose. The eagle is used to show God's plan. Somebody here remember when you read Isaiah, I believe it is Isaiah who says, for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall what? Mind up as eagles. So, so there in the Bible, you have examples, you have illustrations of this animal called the eagle. Well, right here in Deuteronomy chapter 32, you also see an illustration of how God took care of Jacob and the writer Moses is using the image of an eagle taking care of her babies. Here is an eagle that he presents to us to remind us of God's providential care for his people. Just in case just in case you fall asleep in the next five minutes, let me remind you, Grandpa Hill, God cares about you. God really cares about you. If you read verse 9, you see where the writer says, I believe it's verse 10, where the writer says that Jacob was the apple of God's eye. Aren't you glad that you are the apple?
disciples of God's eye. Every now and then when I when I tease of my daughter, I tell her, you have the pride and joy. You are the apple of my eye. And she gets a little embarrassed. But you know what? When it comes to God, I'm not embarrassed. If I am the apple of God's eye, guess what, yo? I'm mighty glad about it. At least I know that God has me in his sight. There are three things that the writer of this text shows us about how God deals with us by using the imagery, by using the illustration of how an eagle takes care of his own. Look, look if you will, look if you will at, at, at verse, uh, uh, verse 11 where he says, As an eagle stirred up her nest, fluttered her over her young, Spread it abroad her wings, stick with them, bear them on her wings. Look, look at what this, this writer is telling us today. First of all, he reminds us that if God is in our nest, God will stir up our nest every now and then. Because when you look at the word stir in the text, it means to agitate. It means to move stuff around. It means to make things the way they didn't used to be. So when the baby eagles, the eaglets, I think something to call them, are laying there in the nest, the mother will come and begin to stir up the nest. And the reason, don't miss this, the reason why she wants to stir up the nest, it just might be that the baby eagles are asleep. It just might be that the baby eagles are taking it easy. It just might be that the baby eagles are relaxing all the time. And the eagle, the mother eagle, wants to let her little babies know, no, it's time to get up. Every now and then it will stir up the nest to make sure that the baby eagles are not lazy, are not laying around as if they don't know what's going. Every now and then God will stir up. Uh, maybe, maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. I don't want to get in your business, but maybe that's why some stuff is happening in our lives. Maybe that's why we, we may not understand what's going on. It just might be that God may have come down to our nest and says to us, maybe you need to wake up. Maybe you need to get up a little bit because if you stay in one position, in one posture for a long time, you know how you get. You know, I know how I get. I get a little stiff. I got to get up and work my body a little bit. You stay in one posture too long, I may decide to stay in bed the whole day. But what God will do in our lives sometimes, he'll come and he'll stir up. Stir up the nest. And the reason why, my brothers and sisters, is because he cares about us so much that he doesn't want us to remain in the same position and posture. Doesn't want us to remain the way we are. Every now and then, we need to get up and do something. Go ahead, go ahead. If you remember, my brothers and sisters, when we were learning how to walk, oh, as children, somebody had to take us and put us on our feet and hold our hands. Now, some babies don't like that. <laughs> but if, if that child is going to walk on his or her own, at some point they've got to get up and start walking and not lay in the crib, help me somebody, not start walk in the walker all day long. Sometimes the parent has to take that child out of his comfort zone so that child can learn to walk. It just might be why there's a staring in your nest right now. God is trying to get you to walk. God is trying to get you to fly. God is trying to get you to do something else other than just lay there and chill. Oh, my brothers and sisters. What I like about God is he'll throw something in the nest to make you know, first of all, he is with you. But he'll throw it in such a way that if you haven't been praying, <laughs> seems like the, the, your knees be saying it's time to break and get down. <laughs> if, if you haven't been to church, it seems like the road seems a little clear. If you haven't been tithing, it seems like God is saying it's time for you to get it right. And so because of that, I'm going to stare up the mess. Don't be bothered. Don't be scared. Don't get mad that your nest is being stirred up right now. It just might be that God is trying to make something.
something better out of you. I don't know about y'all, but you know, when I'm having a good sleep and that alarm clock goes off, <laughs> well, this morning I set the alarm, my flight was at 7 a.m. Uh, Baltimore time, which is 6 a.m. here, and I knew I had to wake up at 4, which is 3 o'clock here this morning. I set the alarm at 4 o'clock. If I had stayed in the nest, if I had stayed in the bed, you know what would happen? I'd have missed my flight. But when that alarm went off, I took that phone and threw it to the ground. I don't want to hear this alarm. But guess what, y'all? If I didn't get up out of the bed and make my way to the airport, I won't be here this morning. All I'm saying is it may be uncomfortable, even, un even inconvenient sometimes. But when God is in the nest, every now and then he'll shake it up to make sure that you are still paying attention, to make sure that you are still in line with his work, his way, and his word. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, when God is in your nest, he'll stir it up. And when he stirs it up, my brothers and sisters, follow God and see what he's trying to do. I, I mean, unfortunately, there's so many Christians who give up so easily. They give up. Sometimes I have in their life, oh, I don't know. I've had enough of this. I'm gone. I, I, can't, I can't take this any longer. I'm going to do something else because it's not working. For me. No, no. It doesn't work like that. God, is, God knows everything you're going through. In fact, before you got into it, He already knew it. And not only that, God has already made a way out of it. So all he's saying here is, I just need you to get into action. I need you to get up and get busy instead of just laying there in the nest and enjoying an afternoon, an evening, or a morning nap. There's some work to do. What I've got to do is shake up your nest a little bit. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't, don't be so, 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 so agitated at God or anybody else. Go ahead and see what God is trying to do. It just might be that your blessing is around the corner. Don't you know? Don't you know that sometimes the blessing is not in the nest? It might be that the blessing is out of the nest and what God wants to do is shake the nest for you to get out of it. Many people are not blessed today because they're comfortable where they are. I've been here 20 years. I've been here 30 years. I've been here 50 years. I don't need to go nowhere. This is the way I've been doing it all this time. Well, that's the reason why you may not be getting a blessing. God may be trying to move you from the comfort zone into his will. The text says that the eagle shares up the mess. Consider the fact just consider it. That the reason why things may be stirred up right now in your life is because God is trying to teach you how to fly. God is trying to teach you how to walk. God is trying to teach you how to pray. God is trying to teach you how to read his word. God is trying to do something new in your life. But in order for him to do that every now and then, he's got to stir up. Are you with me so far? But not only, not only, not only, my brothers and sisters, that does God stir up the nest if he's in the nest. Secondly, when God is in your nest, he will always watch over you. Stay in the same verse. Same verse. Look, 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 look at what the writer says. It says that in the same verse, he says, as an eagle stirred up her nest, fluttereth over her young. Stop right there. Many of you have seen birds flutter. If a hummingbird were to fly in here right now, it would probably stay in one place and you see your wings moving real, real fast. There are some birds that are able to come and just sit over or fly over a particular location. And that's what, the, that's the picture that, that, that the writer is trying to say. He says that what, they, what the eagle does, again, trying to paint a picture of God, what the eagle does is the eagle flies out of the nest, but then the eagle flutters. In other words, the eagle hovers over the nest. 
letting the nest know, letting the little egos know, I may not be in the nest with you, but at least I haven't left the tree. I'm still here. I'm just hovering over you. Let me tell you something. something fascinating about this word fluttereth. Very exciting. The word fluttereth means to hover over something that you cherish. It means to hover over something that you really, really love. So in essence, what the writer is saying to us, showing us a picture of God here, is that God, we always talk about how he looks, he sits high and looks low. In that looking low, don't miss this, God is hovering over us because he cherishes us. He's hovering over us because he loves us. If that were not the case, he won't waste his time hovering over us. He'll back up and leave. But here is God in, in the image of this eagle. He is in one place and he's looking at us. He is hovering over us because he loves us. And aren't you glad, my brothers and sisters, when everything else is looking, you got satellites out there, you've got police running around with all kinds of equipment, checking up on you, going through your phone lines. And aren't you glad that there is a God who is fluttering, who is hovering over you, watching you every day and every night? That's why the songwriter said, all night and all day, I've got what? I've got angels watching over me. God loves you so much that why everybody is trying to get you down, God is right there flying over you. That's why, my brothers and sisters, that's, that's why some things did not get as worse as they should have gotten. That's why we have been delivered from attack and attack and attack and dangers. Why? Because there's a God who is looking over us. Now, if God is an eagle and he's hovering over us, that suggests that God does not only see what's in the nest. God also sees what's around the nest. God also sees what's down the road. God also sees what's up the curve. And before those things get to the next, God will take action. I'm going to tell somebody today, no matter where you go, you better be glad that we serve a God who stays in one place and he's hovering and looking. And the reason why is because he loves us. He cherishes us. He cares for us. And he wants to let us know you're not alone. In, in, in North Nashville, every now and then, a police helicopter would fly by. Because about, about 50, 10 minutes from where I live, it's where Metro, Metropolitan Police of Nashville keep their fleet of helicopters. And every now and then, a helicopter would fly by. And sometimes they fly really low. But then every now and then, the helicopter will fly and then stop in mid-air because they, they can do that. And while that helicopter stop and its blades are turning, sometimes if it's at night, you will see a bright light shining all around the middle. Why? Because they're looking for somebody. Well, God is not a helicopter, but look at what God does. God flies higher than a helicopter. A helicopter may fly five, six thousand feet, but the God I serve, he's in heaven above. So he sees everything that is going on and whatever it is that is going on that God sees that will hurt you, God has the power to put a stop to it. Be encouraged today, my brothers and sisters. God is watching you. And thank God for security alarms. Thank God for those who 
drive through the neighborhoods and make sure everything going or going all right. But I'm here to tell you, the best security that I have is the one I have in God. Okay, do not. I have been through enough dangers to know that if God was not hovering over me like an eagle over her babies, I know I won't be here today. I know that I've been through enough trouble trials and tribulations that if God was not above me looking down on me, that I would be in worse trouble and tribulations today. Be glad that this eagle does not only stir the nest, but this eagle also hovers over you, hover over your nest to make sure that first of all you are secure, but then he hovers over your nest because he just loves you, he covers you, he adores you, he loves you from his heart, and so he can't help but then hover over you and look at you. Yeah, years ago, <laughs> years ago, I was talking to a friend of mine, I just moved to Nashville, and, uh, and I was saying to him, you know, people down here in Nashville, I, was, I had moved from New York. So I said, people down here in Nashville, funny, they look at you. Now, you can't do that in Brooklyn, New York, where I used to stay. You can't do that. You get cut. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about Minnesota, but I mean, <laughs> but in, in Brooklyn, New York, you can't look too long. You, your eyes be coming out of the socket. But in the Nashville, I know this folk with this. You be walking by. You know, you know, I start getting nervous. <laughs> what, 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 what is it? You know what? So I told this guy in front of mine who's been living here for a long time. He said, I said, man, I said, uh, people down here from look at you a lot. I said, uh, I, I, I wonder if there's something to it. And he said, well, Rangsburg to you tell you like this. People look at you either because they, they want they want to help you or they look at you because they want to come to your rescue or they look at you because uh, 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 you may look like someone. I said, yeah, I was following along. He said, but sometimes range variable look at you because they are amazed at your ugliness. <laughs> now this is a point. <laughs> I said, man, how can you say that to me? And he just went ahead to just read me from head to toe, call me ugly. I said, boy, I tell you what, but you know what? You may call me ugly. You may call me something that doesn't rhyme with handsome or cute or whatever. But there is a God who does not live in New York by himself. He does not live in Minnesota or Nashville. He lives everywhere. And I don't have to look good for him to look at me. When he looks at me, no matter what I look like, no matter where I come from, he looks at me and he says, oh, so much. Aren't you glad you have a God like that? Who doesn't only stir up your nest, but loves you and adores you so much that he is constantly where you're sitting right now, God is flying over you. Where you're sitting right now, God is looking at you. And here's the best part. He's planning the best things for you. Third in front, I told you already, the, 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 the ego, the picture here, is when, when God is in your nest, he'll stir up the nest. When God is in your nest, he will watch over you. But thirdly and finally, when God is in your nest, he'll pick you up and carry you out of your nest. Same verse. Look what he says. After he says, as an ego stir up the nest, flutter it over her young. Watch this. Spread it abroad her wings, taketh them, and beareth them on her wings. What that suggests to me, Gravel Hill, is that now that God has stirred up my nest, now that I know that God is constantly watching over me, now, the writer of the text tells me that God has strong and broad wings. That when I'm in my nest and I need to get out, I don't have to take Southwest Airlines. I don't have to call American Airlines. God will swoop down 
and put me on his wings. And when he put me on his wings, you know what eagles do? Eagles fly high and he'll take me out of my nest or take me out of wherever I am that I don't need to be. Many of us are here today, Gravity Hill, because God carried us. It wasn't our name. It wasn't our looks. It wasn't our pedigree. It's because God swooped down where we were. He picked us up and he carried us to where we are today. I don't want you to go back down memory lane, but just in case you went down memory lane 5, 10, 15 years ago, think about where you were when nobody thought you would be in it. And when nobody thought you would make it to where you are, oh, but look at you now. You're here because that eagle came and got you from where you were, put you on his wings, and he carried you. And I need to say to someone else who may not think that God has carried them so far. I need to tell you that no matter what the condition of your nest, that no matter what the condition of your location, no matter what the condition is of your situation, the same God that talked here in this Bible, the same God that Moses talked about carrying his nest, carrying his little bird, that same God is alive and well today. We should have a witness here. Because I, I know that, that there are some people they may not be here today, but there are some people that I know who when it seems as though they've gone so low. I mean, like somebody used to say that I, I've been down almost level, well, to the ground. And it seems like whatever they try, it just doesn't work for them to get up from where they are. But I stopped by to let you know that if anybody can't come down to where you are, that I serve a God who is able to go to any heights. He's able to go to any depths. And that wherever you are, God can come there and he can spread his wings. And when he spread his wings, he'll say to you, what you need to do is get on my wings and I will carry you. And I know for a fact that God can do it because there have been days, even recently, in my life when I was so low, when I couldn't see the light of day. But I'm glad that God works in the daytime, but God also works in the nighttime. God works when the sun is shining, and God works when the clouds come in. And I got a witness here, and when I saw where I was, God swooped down to where I was, and he said, Thomas, why are you worried? Why are you down like this? He said, get on my wings. And I got on God's wings. And I've got to tell you, grandma here, the God that I serve is a God who flies mighty high. Yes, he does. Early this morning, I was flying on Southwest Airlines and we flew at 40,000 feet. But that's not nothing because God can fly above 40,000 feet. Have I got a witness here? Just in case you're low this morning, get on the eagle's wings and God will lift you up right from where you are because he is a great God. He is a gracious God. He is a kind God. And all you got to do is trust him because God knows where you are. If God is not in your nest, what you need to do is invite God to come to your nest. You invite everybody else to your nest. Why don't you invite God to come to your nest? And when God comes there, you stir up every now and then. And I got a witness there. When God comes there, he will hover over you. When God comes there, when you stand in 
the nest long enough. He has spread his wings. He has said, Thomas, get on my wings and I'll cause you to fly. I'm glad today. I said, I'm glad today that God is in my nest. Is he in your nest? I said, God is in my nest. And whenever I'm in trouble, this God is right there with me. Whenever I got tears in my eyes, this God is right there with me. Whenever I'm in trouble, this God comes down and tells me, I will, I will take care of you. I need to tell somebody as I go to my seat, be not dismayed. Wherever they tired, I know there's a lot of stuff happening in your life. But be not dismayed. Wherever they tired, you may not have a job. Be not dismayed. You may not have friends. Be not dismayed. You may not have family. Be not dismayed. The reason why I say, don't be dismayed. I heard somebody say, Yes, he will. Yes, he will. We endure only for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Whatever the condition of your nest, whatever you're going through, I want to tell you today, God is able to stir up your nest, rearrange some things. God is able to look over your nest to make sure nothing goes wrong. And when you have been in that nest long enough, God is able to spread his wings, come down and say, get on board. <laughs> you don't need a boarding pass for this life. Just go ahead and get on board and God will take you out of that situation. I'm telling you what I know. Because God can fix it. God can fix it. What are you going through today? What is it that's troubling you? It seems like you just can't get out of. Can I tell you something today? There's a God who just like an eagle is able to get you out of that situation. And, and again, I'm not telling you something I heard. I'm telling you what I know. And when he comes down and he re resolves that, I'm here to tell you, everybody will know that God did it. Many people, when they get out of that situation, they're happy, happy to say, I did it because of my education. I did it because of my money. I got myself out of this. I got myself out of that. And I just sit back and watch them. And when they get finished explaining how they have plan A and plan, and plan B and they were able to see their way out, I tell them, it wasn't you. Uh, it wasn't you. It was God. Amen. David said, if it had not been for the Lord that was on our side. So, so if, if, if you're here today and you're having a little trouble in the nest, why don't you come, let's pray together. Let's, let's share a word of comfort with you on this day. If you're here today and you are without Jesus, you don't even know this God of whom we speak, and you know you're unsaved, why don't you come? Today. Don't don't wait until next Sunday. Uh, don't wait until uh, tomorrow or next month or next year. 
Don't even try to get it together all by yourself. What you need to do is come to Jesus just the way you are. You know what he'll do? He'll save you. I know he will because he saved me. He saved a lot of people in here today. And all you have to do is give your life to him. And when he saves you, he will be with you wherever you are in the nest or wherever else you are. He'll be right there with you. All you need to do is give your life to him on this day. Why don't you do that? The doors of the church are open unto you. If there's one here this morning who is in need of Jesus in their life, if there's one here today who needs to hear a word of encouragement because you're in trouble, come today. Let us pray with you as the choir sings. Come and let us pray together. Is there one today? Is there one today? Is there one today who will come? Because of who you are, I will lift my voice to say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Is there one today? If you're here and you would like to join the Grapple Hill Baptist Church, you don't have a church home and you would like to join this church, this is your time to come. Come join us as we grow together. Why don't you come today?